Is Mr. Frisbee? Frisbee here. Mr. Frisbee, if you walk out of your store and head east down the highway for 200 yards, you'll have quite an adventure. What's up, everyone? Today on our Twilight Zone Marathon Reviews, we'll be talking about another one of the comedy episodes. Here we go again. I know, I know. These generally get a bad rap. But this time out, we'll be discussing Hocus Pocus and Frisbee. This is actually one of the better comedy entries. Say, did I ever tell you fellas about the time I gave a demonstration with the computer machines? And I beat them all by 21 seconds. Hocus Pocus and Frisbee was episode 30 from season 3. It was directed by Lamont Johnson, and it was adapted by Rod Serling from an unpublished story by Frederick Lewis Fox. As always, spoilers are ahead. The reluctant gentleman with the sizable mouth is Mr. Frisbee. He has all the drive of a broken camshaft and the aggressive vinegar of a corpse. As you've no doubt gathered, his big stock in trade is the tall tale. The place is Pitchville Flats, the time is the present. But Mr. Frisbee's on the first leg of a rather fanciful journey into the place we call the Twilight Zone. This episode stars Andy Devine as Somerset Frisbee. Frisbee is someone who loves to talk. But he's not just a talker. He's a guy who's all about spinning tall tales. Or depending how you look at it, he's a liar. You name it, this guy has done it. Got my doctorate. Wrote a thesis at the age of 13 that's still used as standard text. He's an inventor. He's the grandfather of the American automobile. He has degrees from multiple universities. The list goes on and on. Frisbee's so-called accomplishments are so comically over the top, it's impossible to take him seriously. Old Rocket Thrust Frisbee, they call me. <laughs> what he always called me, old rear engine Frisbee. Old Cumulus Frisbee, they call me. <laughs> his friends don't seem to mind his endless stream of tall tales. They call him out on the absurdity of his stories, and none of them are fans of his harmonica playing. Which is a subtle bit that does come back into play later on, but that's about as far as it goes. So it's established that Frisbee is a harmless goofball. The tone of this episode is tongue in cheek, and for the most part, I found myself going with it. Frisbee owns a small general store, there's not a whole lot of action in this little corner of the world, so it stands to reason a guy like Frisbee would keep the locals entertained with his endless tall tales. Needless to say, this is the Twilight Zone, so obviously, we do get something out of the ordinary to keep us hooked. Frisbee encounters two unusual men who find him to be quite fascinating. This is the man. Frisbee. Is that his name? Frisbee. An incredible specimen. Done everything. Knows everything. Studied in most of their major universities. Holds a doctorate in at least eight fields. Obviously a key man. Later, Mr. Frisbee begins hearing a voice in his head, promising him an adventure. The mysterious voice urges him to head outside and walk down the road. Frisbee hesitates, but he's soon whisked into the sky. As it turns out, the men from earlier are aliens from another planet disguised as humans. And they've just abducted Frisbee. Why have these alien visitors abducted Frisbee of all people? Well, apparently they want to add him to their collection of specimens from other planets. Interestingly, the aliens completely accept all of Mr. Frisbee's tall tales at face value. They have no idea what a lie is. And because of his supposed accomplishments, they see him as the finest the human race has to offer. So this is sort of the funny aspect of the episode, and Frisbee openly admits he's nothing but a massive liar. I'm just an old country boy with a big mouth. In any case, the aliens disregarded his pleas to go home. As the situation grew heated, Frisbee lost his temper, and I got my favorite moment in the entire episode. <laughs> Later, Frisbee decided to relax by playing his harmonica, but he soon discovered the aliens liked his harmonica playing about as much as his friends did, except in this case, the sound of the harmonica was painful to their senses. They referred to his harmonica as, quote, a fantastic instrument that lets out a death sound. Frisbee used this to his advantage, and the aliens basically let him escape. He then returned to his store and found his friends waiting to throw him a surprise party, so apparently it was his birthday all along. Okay. Frisbee tried to tell his friends about the insanity he just experienced, and of course, they didn't believe him. Hey, he's a perfect liver. <laughs> Ironically, this was the one time he was telling the truth. And with that, we bring this episode to a close. Mr. Somerset Frisbee, who might have profited by reading an Aesop fable about a boy who cried wolf, 
tonight's tall tale from the Timberlands of the Twilight Zone. There's a moment in Hocus Pocus and Frisbee that pretty much sums up my viewing experience of this episode. When Frisbee's being told by the aliens to come along with him, he doesn't know how he feels about this strange situation, but the aliens abruptly lift him into the air. Frisbee responds by shouting, Well, that's pretty much me. I went into this episode unsure how it would play out, and I quickly discovered it's something lighter in tone and whimsical. So, I adjusted my expectations and just embraced the silliness of it all. If any of you have ever seen the 2003 movie Big Fish and enjoyed it, you may find this episode works for you. If there was one thing you can say about it, boop boom, was that I was intended for larger things. Big Fish is one of my favorite Tim Burton movies. It starred Ewan McGregor as Edward Bloom, Albert Finney played the character as an older man. On his deathbed, Edward recounted fantastical tales of his life. Much like the lead in our Twilight Zone story, Edward also had a passion for over-the-top storytelling. Among Twilight Zone fans, at least Hocus Pocus and Frisbee is pretty well liked. It's not considered a top-tier episode, but for the most part, fans enjoyed his simple little tale. For me, one of the highlights was definitely the scratchy-voiced Andy Divine. Oh, Archimedes Frisbee, they called me. Divine turned in a unique performance. Frisbee is an interesting and likable enough character. Sure, he rattles off a ton of unbelievable stories, but he's harmless, and at the very least, he has an easygoing, cheery outlook, which is refreshing. Divine had a career that spanned decades. He had several roles in westerns, and he appeared in television as well. Also, fans of Disney's classic animation may recall hearing his trademark raspy voice in Robin Hood from 1973. Oh, for heaven's sake, son. Divine was the voice of Friar Tuck. <coughs> well done, ain't it? Another highlight of this episode is yet another appearance of the famous C-57D spaceship, which originally appeared in the 1956 movie Forbidden Planet and the 1965 TV series Lost in Space. The ship actually appeared in a total of eight Twilight Zone episodes, so you can bet I'll be talking about it again. Another prop which featured quite prominently in the episode was the cool dome device we see on the alien ship. This was actually the Astrogator from Forbidden Planet, which was pretty cool. It's always great to see these iconic props show up. And then there's the aliens. Now, for my money, the greatest moment in this episode was when Frisbee nailed one of them and the alien's face shattered, revealing his true identity. This was a simple enough practical effect, but it worked extremely well. And on a first viewing, it was so unexpected. Had this episode gone in a darker direction, these aliens with their stiff and lifeless expressions could have worked just as well as threatening villains. On that note, these were some pretty interesting aliens. In human form, they had a peculiar way about them. They're clearly suspicious from the get-go. And the fact that they took Frisbee's words at face value and didn't quite understand lies was a nice spin. This bit actually reminded me of the aliens from the Galaxy Quest who also seemed to be baffled by the concept of human beings lying. Is there no one on your planet who behaves in a way that's contrary to reality? You are speaking of deception, deception. lies. lies. Uh, this word, lie, uh, that you mention. You get the point. Aliens are confused by human behavior, which is understandable. We confuse each other all the time anyway. Lastly, I wanted to mention, the aliens here were quite different from what we've seen in the Twilight Zone previously. Again, this was a story that was lighter in tone, so these guys were far less ominous than the Canimates who appeared in To Serve Man. We are here to help you. Nope. Granted, these aliens did attempt to abduct Frisbee, and they did want to make him a zoo specimen, which are familiar elements we've seen in previous episodes. But here, everything's played for laughs. It's tongue-in-cheek. Even Rod Serling's narrations are fairly lighthearted, with Rod smirking and noting, this is a fanciful journey. Now, whether or not you find yourself chuckling depends on your own tastes. As I've previously noted, I think if you accept that this episode isn't meant to be taken seriously, then it's possible to go along with it and enjoy the ride. There's no profound statement on the human condition, and our lead doesn't really suffer any ironic punishment. Instead, we end up with the Twilight Zone version of The Boy Who Cry Wolf. Did Frisbee learn a lesson? Will he stop lying so he doesn't get whisked into space again by aliens? Nope. In any case, there's a fun sci-fi B-movie vibe to this entire episode. The aliens and any divine were all very entertaining, and as always, Rod Serling's witty dialogue really shined. I ended up liking this a lot more than I thought I would. Hocus Pocus and Frisbee may not be for everyone, but... I enjoyed the heck out of it. I'd rate Hocus Pocus and Frisbee a solid 3 out of 5 Frisbee punches. That's it for me. Guys, if you like this, please hit like, hit sub. You know the deal. Until next time, stay safe, be well. Later. You fellas know anything about Nottingham? Here we go again. I can't say we do, Frisbee. 
All right, laugh, you two rogues. But there's going to be a big to-do in Nottingham. Old Prince John's having a championship archery tournament.